Welcome to the Electromagnetic Works video tutorial series. This series is a collection of videos that will show you firsthand how accurately and how quickly you can get designs analyzed and optimized inside SolidWorks. This tutorial will walk you through the entire analysis cycle from start to finish with details of each step. This video will show you how to use our electromechanical simulation package EMS to simulate a DC motor design inside SolidWorks. We will cover the magnetostatic simulation module of EMS to analyze a permanent magnet machine. Before a simulation can be started, the CAD model of the DC motor must be built or imported into SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS offers excellent help and training materials such as tutorials that cover this pre-analysis phase. Therefore, we will not go over the CAD modeling steps here. Instead, our starting point will be a readily built CAD model which will simply be loaded and analyzed. Our CAD model is the motor assembly with all its parts. These parts include the coils, the stator, the permanent magnets, and the rotor. Note that we have two additional air parts, one for the air surrounding the motor directly, and another outer air component. The temperature distribution and the magnetic flux density, among other aspects, are of interest. To this end, the magnetostatic study will be coupled with thermal analysis. Once the study is created, the first step in analyzing an assembly in SOLIDWORKS is to specify the material types of all bodies. The materials can be chosen from the EMS material library or from a user-created material. EMS can provide both linear and non-linear materials, as well as magnetic materials. The coils are all made of copper, which is found in the non-magnetic material folder. For any other bodies with the same material type, you can apply the material from scratch again, or you can copy the material properties by dragging and dropping from a previously assigned body. Another way is to select a large set of components and apply the material to all of them. Next come the magnets. The EMS material library contains a folder dedicated for permanent magnets. In this case, a subset of samarium cobalt is selected for the eight permanent magnets. Magnets have a set of magnetization properties, including whether they are permanent, their coercivity, and their remnants. When applying a magnet, it is essential to specify the direction of coercivity. In this example, some magnets, highlighted in green, will have a coercivity direction outwards radially. This can be specified by selecting cylindrical coordinates. The others will be directed inwards radially. This can be done by selecting cylindrical coordinates and reversing the direction. Both the rotor in the center of the device and the stator are made of mild steel. This is found in the ferromagnetic folder. For the two air components, the air material will be selected from the material library. These parts are essential and must be part of the assembly since electromagnetic fields exist in air. When all bodies have been assigned a material, a blue check mark will appear on the solids icon. To calculate the electromagnetic force applied on any part, request a force calculation, which can either be done using the virtual work method or the Lorentz force method, and then select the solid desired. In this example, we choose virtual work to calculate the force on the rotor. The next step is to apply loads and restraints. In this magnetostatic study, we will apply one of the set of thermal boundary conditions. For now, we will apply convection on all of the faces that come into contact with air from the front or from the back. The convection properties, which include the convection coefficient and the ambient temperature, can also be modified. Following the restraints, we apply the coils. There are two types of coils available. Solid coils or wound coils with multiple turns. When applying a coil, specify the solid as well as the phase of entry of the current and the phase of exit. In half or quarter problems, the current enters one phase and exits from another. In a full problem, however, 
the exit face and the entry face are the same. To select the faces inside a full model, apply a section view from the SOLIDWORKS viewer. The coils surrounding the stator spokes are all wound coils. The current will flow in a counterclockwise direction around each spoke, assuming the narrow end of the coil near the inner end of the spokes is the bottom side. Since this case is a full problem, the exit face is the same as the entry face. All coils will have 50 turns, each of which will have a current of 3 amps. One last thing to be done before running the analysis is to mesh the model. Meshing is very simple in EMS. Simply specify the mesh size and the tolerance for small spaces, then choose to mesh the model. Of course, some smaller bodies need a finer mesh than others, so it is a good idea to apply a mesh control to such bodies. The rotor shaft should have a mesh size of 7 mm. The eight magnets will share a mesh control of 1 mm. This is done by selecting each body from the parts tree. The stator will have a mesh size of 5 mm. For the coils, a mesh control should be applied specifying a mesh size of 1.2 mm. The inner air part is a region where fields can be strong and they reflect the coupling between the motor's parts. To accommodate the small gaps covered by the inner air, a small mesh size of 0.66 mm should be applied. The remaining objects, in this case the outer air component, will follow the global mesh size. The outer air is used as an enclosure volume. This part should be made sufficiently large to ensure that fields are small enough at its far edge. This way discontinuities are avoided since the domain would not be truncated too close to the motor. Due to this, the mesh size of the larger air part can be relatively large as well. To apply the global mesh size, select the Create Mesh option and specify the global mesh size, 60 mm, and the tolerance, 0.1 mm. After all the input is entered, you can run the study.